different topics on this podcast has been the importance of planning for the unexpected in business and in our personal lives. For the last several decades, one of our most outspoken advocates on this message on this podcast has been Tim McDaniel, a principal on Ray's Valuation and Transaction Advisory Services team. Today, Tim's central message will not be about the importance of planning ahead in your business. Instead, he will be delivering another message, one that is deeply personal and that zeroes in on the subject that has turned his entire life upside down. In fact, the title of today's episode is Advice from a Dying Man. Every year, around 6,000 people in the U.S. are diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. Recently, Tim, a long-term leader and principal at Ray & Associates and long-term colleague, joined the fight. Today, ALS is always fatal and patients typically live three to five years after diagnosis, but it doesn't have to be this way. In recent years, there have been great strides in the scientific community, and it's only a matter of time before a cure is found. Unfortunately, there are other roadblocks to contend with as well, and these are the roadblocks Tim and so many others are determined to remove. May is ALS Awareness Month, and we are proud to bring you this special episode of Unsuitable on Ray Radio to help raise awareness of this terrible disease. And I'm your host, Dave Kane. Welcome back to the podcast, Tim. Well, thank you, Dave, and I really appreciate Ray taking the time to do this. This is, uh, by all accounts, uh, we probably have you, uh, this may be your fourth time. I think so. So, uh, got a very uh, interesting uh, topic. Uh, We want to talk about ALS and maybe use the next few minutes to help Uh, educate uh, our listeners on uh, the disease, what to look for, and maybe some things we can do uh, as a podcast community uh, to uh, help raise awareness and funding. So, you know, let's start off and, and, and talk about what is ALS? Well, it's also called Lou Gehrig's disease. Because Lou got it, actually, he spoke 80 years ago about this in the summer. It was the 80 year anniversary of it. Um, it's, a, it's a motor neuron disease where the motor neurons are in your brain and spinal cord. They no longer communicate with your muscles, and your muscles die. So eventually, all your voluntary muscles will die. Anything you can move on your own will eventually die. Um, so what happens to people, they start off like me where I had foot drop. My left foot did not work right. And it keeps progressing. And eventually I'll end up in a wheelchair. Somebody's going to have to bathe me, change my diaper, feed me, and those type of things. There's many people with ALS, the only thing that they can do is move their eyes. The rise, okay. Steve Gleason's a hero. There's this fantastic show called Gleason on Prime Video. It's well worth watching if you're interested. This guy was an NFL player. He's a hero for the Saints. He had the famous punt block mm. after Pratina. He has done amazing things. Today, he can only text with his eyes, but he's doing wonderful things. He's also was a dad. He had a baby last year, so that still works. So, but sure, yeah. he um, so he drives his wheelchair. He texts. He does all these great things just with his eyeballs. So again, it's uh, it's a uh, neuro disease that again your your muscles just just as you mentioned just die and right. and, and not work, and it starts in the limbs. Now, you had mentioned your your um, your foot, and that's where it all right. kind of started, your foot and leg. Now, I'll correct you on one thing. Sometimes it starts in your in breathing your, and your voice. That's called bulbar okay. onset. Okay. Yeah. And um, when did you, when were you diagnosed with ALS? Officially, it was Valentine's Day of this year. Happy okay. Valentine's gift. Yeah. Well, boy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what is your prognosis as we sit here today? Well, they tell us it's two to five years once you get diagnosed. 
There's many people I'm communicating with right now that have it for 10 to 15 years. Stephen Hawkins had it for 50. But there's some people that less than a year they die. So it's a very variable disease. It impacts everybody so differently. So even though it's a two to five year uh, window, and, and that's kind of the things that I've been reading, again, body decline starts almost immediately, shortly thereafter, right. you're diagnosed. Right, right. Yeah, many, many times the body decline obviously it happens before you're diagnosed because you go to the doctor and stuff like that because things are happening. Sure. And so. Now we talked uh, off mic, you're still able to uh, drive an automobile. Right. Um, what about run the vacuum cleaner around the house? Is that <laughs> probably off limits? Well, it's my the things I wish I could do is go pick up dog poop. I wish I was could go in rush hour traffic. I wish I could go out and mow the grass. These are things I cannot do. And my left le leg is very weak. My left foot's paralyzed. I have to walk over the walker. Um, I really can't bend down. My arms are getting weaker. It's hard to button up the shirt. No type of things. So it's just things that, everyday things that we take for granted, right. I take for granted, our listeners take for granted, that you're sitting there and say, boy, I'd love to do that stuff. Right, right. I would, yeah, I'd give anything to do that. You know, I see that um, you're using a walker, so you can no longer walk without the aid of uh, uh, a walker or crutches or someone helping you. Right. You know, I was admiring your walker here. It looks uh, pretty cool. We yeah. need to, uh, you know, it needs some, uh, maybe we need to point, paint that thing brown and orange. Yeah, that's right. Browns. Put, a, put a number six on there and get all ready for football season. Well, yeah, you know, it's a two to five year prognosis, but it's not the future grandkids that I want to live or my wife. It's the Browns are turning around. There you go. So that's what's really driving my you know, drive to stay here on earth. You've got it. You've got it. And uh, are you uh, are you in pain? No. No pain? No, other than sometimes you do fall and stuff like that. So. Okay. Okay. I understand you had, uh, you know, part of your, uh, you recently took a trip to the, to the beach and we're doing things that everybody else did and had some fun. Well, I wasn't doing everything everybody did. I mean, I could sit in the balcony, look at the sun, eat seafood, but I couldn't go on the beach and walk around and go in the ocean. Um, my wife's a tall, skinny gal, and she couldn't support me to, to walk me To down. walk there? Yeah. Okay. So what's, uh, you know, I want to talk about, uh, you know, today's uh, driving theme is, you know, becoming an ALS warrior. And I think that is totally a the top of, of your goals to become a warrior for this thing. Right. And I want to dig into that after we, I think, I think we've got a clear understanding of, of the disease as best we can. It's a paralyzing disease that's, that's, you know, onset taking, it's starting to hit you a little bit. Right. There's a couple of things I want to explain about the disease. It's a strange disease that impacts people who are healthy more than people unhealthy. If you worked out or in the military, you have more than a two times chance of getting it. Um, and then they, the article just came out, they expect a 69% increase in this disease over the next 25 years. When did you, were there any early signs that you can, you know, thinking back, yeah. Well, you mentioned your foot, but anything, you know, the last five, ten years, you think, oh, boy, now I'm looking back, that maybe was a sign. Yeah, good question, because one of my passions is to get the early symptoms out there, because for me, I had this thing called foot drop, and they kept on saying, my doctors kept on saying, you don't have ALS, don't worry about that, because I would bring it up. And they said, my foot drop is because of a pinched drum in my back. So I had back surgery, and then after back surgery, my symptoms really took off. Um, 
And looking back, I wish I knew the early signs of it because I would have either fought the neurologist or got another one. Um, so weakness in any limbs is a sign, but twitching, they're called facticulations, is a big sign. So if you have muscle twitching in your arms, legs, or tongue, that's a big sign of ALS. Muscle stiffness is another big sign. So those are early symptoms. If you have weakness and twitching, you know, I don't want to scare people, but that's something to think about. All right. Well, we're looking for advice. I, I, again, I, I, I'm very ignorant of the, uh, of the disease, as are, are most people, and I think that's uh, one of the things we want to look at is, hey, what are the symptoms? And like you said, I, th I think there's some good, good things there. Don't, you know, don't take it for granted. Right. So when I had the foot drop, I was just running in front of the house, and my foot didn't work. Um, but I would look in the mirror and see all this twitching over my body. And that's again, I was uh, looking back, I wish my doctor would have took off my clothes and looked at my body. And, and saw that. How yeah. long ago would, would you say, as we sit here today, was that, did that twitching start? Well, I think it was about the same time as the foot drop. Okay. Yeah, so that happened in December of 2017. Okay, so really, uh, you know, really uh, recently. Right. Is is this disease anything out there that you've read? Uh, and I know you spent a lot of time reading and sharing ideas. Is is this uh, hereditary? Anything hereditary? In this uh, less than ten percent. Less than ten percent. Yeah. What about uh, diet uh, activities? You'd mentioned sometimes the folks in the military, people working out. Maybe uh, maybe it hits them. But anything right. else you can educate us on? Well, the workout people, athletes, there's some theories, maybe concussions, but I think the bigger theory is the nerve impingement. People who work out have spinal issues, okay. neck issues, those type of things, and maybe that starts the process, okay. is a theory. Um, I mean, there's other theories out there, but they saw him figure it out. Sure. But that's, again, if you're a male ages 40 to 70 and you worked out in the military, you have a much higher chance of getting it. Okay. Now, uh, are you still able to read, watch TV, yep. text, do emails, think through all of that? Yep. That's pretty still it pretty strong. doesn't impact your mental capacity much. Okay. so. And you just can't move around, right. but you can still think through some right. some ideas. Now, um, and and certainly you're um, you know long term employee of Ray. You're you're currently on a on a leave of absence, so you're 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 communicating, but not an an entire amount until this thing gets organized. Right, right. I'm on. I, I'm thankful for how Ray has treated me on, on short term disability. Um, yeah, I'll just talk a little bit more about the disease. So quarterly, I go see a doctor. The only thing they do is measure how much I decline. Okay. There's no, no real discussion of a cure or a turnaround. But as you decline, then they offer services to help you out. To do that, okay. So there's no talk right now of a cure. So when I say I'm on short-term disability, there's not much hope I will come back to work. Okay. And so, but I'm still in communication with our evaluation team, talking about issues and stuff like that. You know, I do want to step back a little bit and, and talk about your legacy with Ray and Associates is that, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that business valuation team right now is alive and well and doing right. great. And a lot of that has to do with the seeds you've sown and the leadership and the thoughtfulness that you've had to, hey, I've got to find my replacement. Right. And I remember 10 years ago we were having those discussions and you began to, to do that. Right. So right. hats off to you where the Ray business valuation team is today is a direct correlation of your hard work. Yeah, I think Mary Beth Kessler has done a great job taking over it. 
And Holly Taylor and I have worked together for over 20 years, and she's so she's proud awesome. of it. Yep. So they're she, awesome. She, they're, all the clients love her. And so, you know, Tim, I, I was, you know, reading your blogs and your, and your care page, and, and, and you talk a lot about the importance of your faith as you go through here. You know, when, when the disease started and you, you found out uh, about ALS, how big, a, how big a role did your faith play? Well, it plays a huge role. Um, but there's days where I'm pissed off at God. I'm you know, I yeah. scream and yell at him and just be upset. And then there's days I'm glad my hope is really the next life. Uh, I'll have a new body. I'll race you. I'll kick your butt because yeah. I, I have a head start. You get a head start. You can work it out. You can work it out. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I I was very curious on that, I, and I assume that yeah, there's some anger, but I think in the latest uh, kind of blogs, I think you've, you know, especially the ones around Easter time and the resurrection, I I could sense and feel that man, you were there, right. you, you you got it, you got your arms around. I actually, I just ordered a book, um, and I uh, just got it. Some guy who was a deep spiritual Christian guy who got it at 47. He's been living with it for 15 years. And he's talking about it's the best thing that ever happened to him because his intimacy with God is out of this world now. So I want to learn from him. Good, good. Thanks, uh, thanks for sharing that very uh, uh, personal uh, uh, moment. Um, you know, there are some you know, we're going to talk here in a little bit about how to get involved, but there's some, uh, a, a, a drug I think I, I, you shared with me, Neuro-Own. Um, is that the drug that, that we're talking about that's, that's out there? It's a treatment. A by treatment. A, by okay. a company called Brainstorm. Neuron is a stem cell process. Is what what it is, okay. and they're in phase three trials right now, and there's been some people that's on the internet that are my position, but now they can run. It's been the first hope we've had as ALS patients. Now I can try to qualify for a trial. I have to apply like applying for college. They can accept me or not. But what really sucks, the closest place. I can go is in Boston. So that's 750 miles away. I have to go there 18 times over the next year. And I have a 50% chance of getting a placebo. So I have a deadly disease, and the FDA is saying we have to go through this process. And the closest time that that would be available under the current process would be two years. Two years, okay. And it might be too late for me. Okay. So that really, really is upsetting to all who call them pals, people with ALS. And, you know, it's just very, very depressing that the FDA is saying, just be patient. Yeah, yeah. And, and so uh, let me make sure I, I have my facts correct there, is that there is a... Uh, a treatment out there it's not approved but for any chance of you getting in there realistically it's a two-year wait right before and then the current process before I get approved and be commercially available but there's things that could happen today if the company and the FDA decide to work together there's something called right to try as a patient that has a deadly disease, I'll sign up. If it kills me, okay. But I have a right to try it and pay for it myself. There's something called um, accelerated um, approval, which the FDA can say, time out, let's not do the phase three trial, let's just say it's okay. It's, it's going to be approved. Then the insurance companies and everybody can work together to get this to the patients. And stuff like that. That's what's driving us crazy. We don't understand why the FDA has not responded to our request. 
why, why isn't this available to us? You know, you're right. Time is not on our side. Right. And is there anything that uh, is being done, whether it's protest, letter writing, you know, talking to our politicians to, right. you know, to move this along? I, I to, to paraphrase what you said, I don't have two years. I right. may not have two years. Right. Or in two years, I may not be able to speak. I may not be able to walk. Right. I have may be somebody. too far along before I can't use the drug. Right. And, uh, oh, by the way, there are side effects. You might get a headache. You might get right. an upset stomach. You know, you might get, you know, so, so, some of this. And you're like, I don't give a damn. Just give me that right. treatment. And that's the stem cell treatment. Right, right. Okay. You know, before we uh, jump into that uh, further, I want to step back a little bit when... You know, when you were, you know, take take us behind the scenes, and, and again, this is kind of like follows the faith discussion, very personal. When you first were diagnosed, and you had to start telling, you know, your family, your friends, your colleagues, how in the world did you find the strength to do that? That was so hard. Um, yeah, my son took me to my neurologist appointment where I got the official diagnosis. So obviously I told him first, and then my wife, and my other two kids that first day. And the love and support I've received is overwhelming. That makes me want to be the best ALS warrior. But I had to do it in stages because it's so overwhelming. Right. My family first, and then close friends, and then close workmates and all that type of stuff. Now it's getting a little, a little bit more public. And I felt so grateful that usually every day I have somebody visiting me and walking my dog, Oreo. Yeah, so that's right, <laughs> Oreo. Yeah, Oreo has become a popular uh, yeah. person and is our individual uh, to right. us, you know. So, uh, so Oreo's yeah. around here somewhere. But I also want to shout out to my lovely wife. We've only been married for just over a year. But... She's an angel, and sometimes I would say, geez, I shouldn't have married her because she's getting into this. But her love is amazing, and it's been the best thing that's happened to me, so it's been great. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, I guess, I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not often for a loss of words, but I'm kind of for a loss of words on, on that after that. Wow. Very, uh, very heartfelt. So. Are you able to, you know, now let's talk about how to get involved. Are you able to speak to other organizations, other groups, uh, companies that maybe have an employee uh, um, that has ALS? Uh, you're so inspirational in your business background, I think you can make a difference. Yeah. So I joined an organization, I'm part of an organization called I Am ALS. So I am ALS.org. It's amazing what they have accomplished in a short time. Brian, the leader, just spoke to Congress a couple weeks ago. He's back in Washington today. Um, but there's like 20 of us pals who are trying to make a difference. So visit that website to learn more. Um, there's the other part of people who are planning maybe a protest at the FDA in June. I'm not sure if I'm going to join that yet or not. But I'm going to look into that. There were a lot of people of ALS when I go there. And, and the other thing I would like is to get on media to talk about this. Because this is like, I think, HIV. Remember HIV sure. 30 years ago or so? And People said, geez, how's this going to get cured? This is horrible. And they found a cure pretty quickly, but they, the government, the companies, everybody invested in, in this. And what we feel in, as pals, they said, well, this is a rare disease. There's only 20,000 of you in the United States. But if it's like Parkinson's, it be three or four hundred thousand of us. It's because we die so quickly. You know, that, that's why it's a rare disease. And we just want everybody just to help us, you know, get the word out, 
Now, see us, hear us, join us is sort of the phrase we like to use. So the organization is IMALS.org. We right. can look that up. Uh, is there a, we're sitting outside of the suburb of Columbus, Ohio. Is there an organization within central Ohio? Yeah. Um, the ALS, well, the Central Ohio chapter, um, is really good. They've been really helpful to me. We're going to have a walk in September, which I hope to participate in. I might be in a wheelchair, but I want to be part of that to yeah. raise funds and awareness so the central chapter is good. You know, I believe that walk is scheduled for September 22nd right. here in Columbus, and I believe Ray and Associates is going to have a team. We're putting together a team. Right. Walk to defeat ALS, uh, trekking for Tim. So I right. think that's in the works. Now, you know, I, I, I know you're a Browns fan, and you're thinking, okay, I, I, I checked. That walk is on a Sunday, September 22nd, oh, yeah, in funny. the afternoon. But, you know, don't fret. The Browns have a Sunday night game. Oh, eight, good. 820 kick against the Rams. Wow, that's great. So this is pretty good. I think we'll be 14 and 2 this year. But, so. 14 and 2? Rams won't be a game we lose. Yeah. But. So, you know, let's uh, shout out to the listeners that uh, support Ray, you know, and walk to defeat ALS on September 22nd. And I think here, you know, at the end of the podcast, we'll uh, mention how to do that. But basically, in short now, and we'll repeat it, is jump on the Ray website and we'll find your warrior site on there and, right. and, and get some things going. Yeah, I'm going to get back to an ALS warrior. What's been amazing is I've connected with maybe 50, 60 people that have this disease. And they've been an inspiration to me. And how do you find an ALS warrior? Well, some people who get this disease, quite frankly, they kill themselves. There's, there's a high percentage of suicide. Some choose to do a, some people do a bucket list. They just go out and do all they can. But there's others, I call an ALS warrior, that's somebody who wants to fight hard to stay here. And also to change the course of the future of the disease. That's how I define an ALS warrior. So right now I'm taking about 15 supplements. I'm taking a drug that supposedly is going to um, extend my life by a few months. You know, I do a little bit of exercise and do all I can. So I can be here to see Brown's victories and grandchildren and, and again, so many people love me that it's been an inspiration to stick around. Right. You know, as I, as I look outside the window, it's not a very nice day. For me, it's raining, uh, not a lot of outdoor, outdoor activities. You're looking at that saying, this is a wonderful day. Yeah. Give me 10 more. Give me... 500 more of these. I'm right. a fight. I'm a warrior. Right. And again, going back to your business background, you were a warrior in the, you know, in your in your segment. I mean, you fought. You did that. You started it from scratch. You know how to do this. You can do this. Right. Um, you need some help. Yes. Yeah. So how can people help me? Um, you know, if you can contact me with any media sources, I'd love to be in papers and. TV or radio or something like that to spread awareness of what we, us pals, need. Um, write to congressmen and censors. We'll have a form, sort of a form like that on our website okay. that will have a template for that. Okay. Um, and obviously, you can donate to IMALS or the local ALS A chapter to help in the fight. Sure. And, and again, more information is the better the education. Um, you have a Twitter handle, and that's at Tim McDaniel. And I think you have a lot of information on there. Plus, you're, you're, um, you do a lot of blogging and writing and continue to do that. I must right. mention you've written, what, two or three books? Uh, two. So you're a pretty good writer. Yeah. Those, I, those I books still, have, you can I still... I may have a third one. Oh, you're working on a third one? Maybe. Good. Yeah. Good. Keep on uh, going with that. So, 
Um, you know, before we finish up, anything else as far as warrior related that we want to share that maybe we we missed? I know we just kind of scratched the surface, but I think we've we've got a lot of this. Yeah, I, I think you know, be educated about this disease. It's, it's a growing disease, and the earlier you can catch it, you know, the longer I think you can live. Um, you know. If you want to be educated more, watch the show Gleason. It, okay. It's a good show. It shows somebody going through this disease. Um, the big decision we all have to make, which Gleason make, is eventually I won't be able to breathe. My diaphragm muscles become weak. That's how we die. So the big decision we have to make is, do we get a ventilator? that our official keeps your breath alive, like Hawkins did, like Gleason did, and those type of things. So. Are yeah. you scared of dying? No, I'm not, but with the Browns and the Ranch children coming, I think I want to hang around. You are a warrior. <laughs> you are a warrior. You know, we got to get this to the Browns and well, uh, your inspiration. Let's have, let's have one more. Blue Jackets. Blue Jackets. You've got it. Right. You've got it. Plus, I just started watching the Game of Thrones. Yeah. Okay, okay. I have to. Yeah. We'll watch, you know. Now uh, we know what you do all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you would mentioned uh, bucket list, and uh, I thought I heard you say you really don't have a bucket list. You're just going to do what you want to do. Well, what I'm saying is some people say, I'm just going to do my bucket list. Yeah. And do a bunch of things. I, I think there's things I want to do. But... I also want to focus on helping others and being with my family right. and those type of things. So. And continue to educate, educate, right. educate. Right. You know, I know you're a baseball fan, and, and as, as we both are, and certainly, uh, you know, I went and, and checked out um, Lou Gehrig's uh, farewell speech for okay. baseball. And there was a line in there that I pulled that I want to read to you because... I, I think it fits you to a T, and it says, I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Right. And that was Lou as farewell speech. Yeah. So, you know, he's probably the most famous one, but there's some other folks, and you mentioned that uh, that is... That yeah, is the guy who created Spongebob died in November of ALS, and uh, Tim Green, a famous... NFL football player just announced it again in November and stuff like that. So there's a lot, a lot of people you know have it. So, you know, the other thing you mentioned, there's maybe uh, a lot more people out there that have been misdiagnosed that have the disease and, and either they pass away before it's fully known. Right. So, you know, the last takeaway, we, to we certainly talked about your story, and the second one was how to get involved, and, and we're going to push that out at Ray and Associates through our website, but the third takeaway that, that we wanted to talk about was prepare for the unexpected. Right. And, you know, again, you've, you've, we've kind of touched on this where the succession planning over the years helped uh, your success, but you want to kind of wrap up a few things on prepare for the unexpected. Sure. So when I had my first symptom of this, I was 57 years old. I ate probably 80% organic, healthy food. I worked out two or three days a week. I was probably in the best shape of my life. And I got this disease. You know, and I just had physical, everything was good. Um, so, and there's a lot of stories out there of people getting slammed by an accident, illness, or something like that. If I didn't prepare and hire Mary Beth as my replacement, there'd be no business valuation department today. Um, so, and the other thing I'm glad I did was buy disability insurance. I didn't think I needed it. Buy long-term health care insurance, which I could, Eventually, I'm going to have to pay somebody to come in here to do things for me. Sure. So I do have some insurance for that. And have adequate enough life insurance that my wife and kids will be taken care of. Um, so I think it's important. Everybody should sit down one day 
I'd say a quarter of a year and think, what if something bad happened to me? What would that look like to my family and friends? The one thing I haven't done yet, which is going to be hard, but I need to do this, is sort of plan for my funeral. You know, those sure. sort of things. So I want to to see somebody who is loved dying is bad, but it's worse when you have to take care of these other things. So make life easy as you can for those who love you. Right. Well, it sounds you're really at peace with the planning you did for the unexpected. Yeah. You know, the financial planning and hats off uh, to you. You know, we hear about it. You preach that from the beginning of your career. And lo and behold, you're living it. Yeah. And, and I guess uh, to our listeners, we encourage you to, you know, get that planning. Look at the unexpected. Right. Um, you never know when that, when that happens. Well, the reality of is I'm going to be 59 in about a month. So maybe I had 20 more years. But I'm facing what everybody's facing. We all will die. No matter how healthy we eat. How much we work out, all of us are going to die. So that that's a for sure thing. It's just knowing when. Mine's just more compressed. Yeah. So what you're saying doesn't matter what you eat. So I guess the, the takeaway is, <laughs> hey, you know, cheeseburgers, fries, pizza, <laughs> a bucket of beer. Let's go. You know. Well, I'm not sure everybody that, would agree with that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, wonderful idea on the uh, on the on the planning. Um, and Tim, thank you for sharing your sh story with us today. Very uh, heartfelt, very moving, and thank you for providing us with the resources we can use to get involved in the fight to find a cure for this terrible, paralyzing disease. All right. Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it, and thank you for the way partners and management team, they've done a great job of supporting me through this process. Listeners, we've included links to many of these resources on our website at www.raycpa.com backsplash warrior Tim. Let me read that again to you. It's www.raycpa.com backslash warrior Tim. And I got to tell you, sitting here with Tim, he is a warrior. Thank you. Tim, give us a goal. You said you know, Doc gave you two to four years. What's your goal? To beat that. You're going to beat it. We're going to beat it with you. And again, follow the link on our webpage to gain access to Central Ohio Chapter of the ALS Association, the IMALS organization that Tim referred to. And don't forget to sign up for Ray and Associates Walk to Defeat ALS Team. The information will all be on our website along with Tim's personal blog and more stories. We also post updates as they come in about the work Tim is doing to raise awareness an advocate for FDA approval of vital treatments. I hope you will check back regularly and we'll try to post and get a picture of Tim when he's protesting in Washington, D.C. in front of the FDA offices. That should be a great picture. <laughs> Thank you again for listening to this special edition of Unsuitable on Ray Radio. I hope you were inspired after hearing Tim's story and I hope you will seriously consider the many merits of planning for the unexpected. Hey, Dave, can I borrow your speedo for that? You can. Okay. You totally can. Uh -huh. um, and we'll get that right in the mail to you. Okay. On behalf of the podcast community and the entire Ray family, which includes our employees, our clients, our professional networks, our friends, and families, Tim, we wish you the best of luck and continue to be a warrior for a cure. Until next time. I'm Dave Kane, encouraging you to make a difference and join the fight as we continue to support Tim in his battle and advocate for ALS warriors everywhere.